All right, guys, drive log number two. We're gonna talk about the refrigeration cycle here. And I know a lot of you guys know this already, like the back of your hand, there's a lot of people that don't. There's installers that have been in the trade for many, many years that have been given a truck, tools, piping, condensing units, evaps, been told to go bang in systems and they don't fully understand the grasp of the concept behind how the system actually functions. Now we're gonna keep it very basic here and go through the four components, the compressor, the condenser, the metering device and evaporator. Now on a podcast I did a few months back, I talked about this, but I started at the evaporator. For me, that's where the magic happens. Okay, what are we trying to do in an AC or refrigeration circuit? We're trying to remove heat and we're trying to remove moisture. Those two things happen at the evaporator. So that's where I'm gonna start. And then we're gonna move through the rest of the components. So in the evaporator, we have refrigerant entering as a flash gas. What that means is it's a percentage of liquid and a percentage of vapor. There's a rule of thumb on that. 75% liquid, 25% vapor. Somewhere in that range. Now as that refrigerant moves through the evaporator, it absorbs heat from the air that's passing over the coil. As it absorbs heat from the air, it starts to boil off. That's the saturation point when it's liquid and vapor at the same time. That's saturation. That's what you're going to see on your gauges when you see that temp. That is a saturation temperature. So as that liquid starts to boil off, it turns into a vapor. Once it gets to full vapor, we've done all the work that we can do in that evaporator. Any heat added from that point on is called superheat. So we're gonna move down the suction line from there as a superheated vapor, considering the system is working properly. As a superheated vapor. Okay, low pressure, superheated vapor, down the line into the compressor. Now the compressor is a vapor pump. It pumps from low to high pressure. Okay, that refrigerant's gonna move from low to high through the compressor. That refrigerant's gonna pick up more superheat in the compressor because the compressor itself is pumping and it's producing heat. So we move into the discharge line. The discharge line is gonna have all the heat that we've picked up from the evaporator the superheat and all the heat we've picked up from the compressor into the discharge line. If you take a temp of the discharge line, it's going to be well above the saturation point. That is the superheat that's in that system, right in that discharge line. So we're going to move as a high pressure gas down that discharge line. We're going to hit the condenser. We are going to start to move through the condenser. Air is going to blow over the condenser, rejecting heat to the atmosphere or the ambient around it. When you look on your gauges again, you're gonna see a saturated condition in there. That temp you see, that saturated condensing temperature is the temperature you see on your gauges. So as we start to reject heat in the condenser, we start going from a vapor to a liquid. Once we've hit the point where we're full liquid, any heat rejected from that point on is called subcooling. And we need subcooling to get to the metering device to make the system efficient. So as we move out of the condenser, we're gonna move into the liquid line as a subcooled liquid, still at high pressure. Okay, we're gonna move down that liquid line and we're gonna hit that metering device, whether it be a TX valve, a fixed orifice, or a capillary tube, or capillary tube, as some of you guys might say. I say capillary, just the way I was taught. We're gonna move that refrigerant subcooled liquid into that metering device, and that is gonna flash into the evaporator. As it flashes into the evaporator, we come back to where we started from. All right, that is the basic refrigeration cycle in a nutshell. And when you think about it and you sit down and study it, it actually becomes a lot more simple than a lot of people make it out to be. Anyway, guys, that's a quick drive log. Number two, basic refrigeration cycle, happy HVACing.